Hello, is it me you're looking for? I can see it in your eyes. I can see it in your smile. Hi, how are we? What is up all? It is Georgia Kate. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to episode two of reacting to Maths 22. Today we are going to react to episodes three and four. We've watched it. We have delved into the drama and we are ready to analyze the fuck out of the latest two weddings and the introductions to the honeymoons and getting to know each other and falling out of love after so quickly falling into love because of reality hits. Everyone's bubble is burst. You know what I'm saying? Time to get into nitty gritty of all of that and a bag of potato chips. Trying to pump out two episodes a week for y'all to stay up to date but currently I'm having internet issues and it's so very frustrating. So bear with me if I don't stay on schedule. Life happens. Currently there are noises. I'm still in my kitchen. My study desk came today, but I have not set it up. I'm on strict time restrictions at the minute to fit everything in in my life. And so we are still in the kitchen. It's a good kitchen though. We like it. It's funky and fresh as James Charles would say. I'm not having a caffeinated beverage today, but I do have my beloved Pepsi Max. So get your beverage of choice, smash the like button and consider hitting subscribe and the notification bell so you get notified every time I come out with a new fucking episode because as we are well aware, Georgia cannot keep to a fucking schedule. We're trying our best. Anyway, let's get into it. Let's delve into the drama that is episode three and four. So in episode three, we are introduced to two new couples. They are Selena and Cody. We've got a Celine and we've got a Selena. So that's gonna be interesting. And Holly and Andrew. Andrew is from Texas. He is not Australian from birth, but you know, he came here, he lives here, he's on maths. Okay, first and foremost, the fucking dresses. I think out of the two new brides, Selena's dress is more my taste. It's still incredibly plain and simple, and that's not my vibe. I'm more of a fucking extra as fuck kind of person, but I don't vibe with Holly's dress, plain and simple. So by default, Selena won. <laughs> So Selena's dress is the Freddy dress by Jack Sullivan. Very, very classically gorge. And the pearl veil was cute, although I don't do veils. Veils are lame. And Holly wore a veil too, and I'm just like, mm, so old school. But anyway, each to their own. Obviously, Maths is trying to bring the veil back for whatever reason. Holly wore the Isabel dress by Karen Willis Holmes. It's got a lot going on. It is more extra, but I just don't like the way that the woven bits clash with the sequin bits. It's not a vibe for me. Anyway, she looked pretty. Following the wedding dress win, I think Selena also won the wedding venue win as well. Like that nighttime ceremony was gorgeous. I adored all of the candles, all of the nighttime glam, all of the floral arrangements. It looked very native. The only thing that I would leave out would be the fucking yellow petals everywhere. I don't understand the petal aisle. So their nighttime wedding was held at Sweven Estate. It's like a luxury getaway an hour away from Sydney CBD. So very cute, very rustic. I loved the nighttime idea. I've never even thought of a nighttime wedding. I liked it. It was very romantic. And the colors were gorgeous too. The oranges and the greens. I think greens are really understated for weddings. I really love the green aesthetic, all the different types of greens and different leaves and stuff for arrangements as opposed to floral arrangements. I think they're really pretty. Then they had an intimate dinner for two. Again, no family or friends present. They had a romantic dinner in front of like a big outdoor fireplace, which was really cute. Very romantical. Holly and Andrew's wedding coincidentally was also held at Curzon Hall in Sydney. Literally the same venue as Ella and Mitch. So there you go. Reduce, reuse, recycle. It was a more classical grand looking wedding with big white pillars with vases on top with the floral arrangements out the top of the vases and floral pieces in the background. I didn't really like it. I think it was a bit OTT. Lots of pink, lots of deep pinks and white light pinks and all of that jazz. Too much pink. And again, a fuckload 
load of fucking petals down the aisle. I feel like that would get caught up in your train and everything. I would just find it annoying. But anyway, each to their own. Over the top is obviously coming back in for weddings. So Selena has Cambodian heritage. Um, her parents are Cambodian and they survived a war in Cambodia. They happen to be very traditional. And when Selena broke the news, they were less than pleased because she grew up in a white community and dealt with a lot of racist bullying. And she also, I don't know, she, uh, she strikes me as someone with internalized racism because she mocks her parents in such a way that sort of is that stereotypical Asian racism. You know what I mean? So that was a bit cringe, but you know, she's dealing with stuff, obviously. She seems nice enough. She's a black sheep of the family because she's a hairdresser, apparently. So it's a bit sad when your parents don't approve of your passions, but you know, you don't live to please your parents and that's what we gotta let go of sometimes. But Cody's dad passed away when he was 15 and he's been dealing with, you know, learning how to be a man and, you know, dealing with appearing weak. So that's a bit of a red flag for me in terms of toxic masculinity issues. He doesn't want to appear weak, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so they're painting them out to be kind of both resilient because they've both been through shit. I mean, what person hasn't been through shit? Am I right? Everyone is resilient in their own way, I think. So I don't think that's necessarily a compatible match. Their wedding was really beautiful and it started off really sweet and really nice. She sort of showed up in complete authenticity. She's a bit quirky here and there. I just have to point out that Cody's hair was a fucking disaster. He looked really great in his classic tuxedo look, but I'm sorry, what was with the comb over? Babe, don't just, if it's thinning out, which we all know that it is, don't comb it the fuck over. Just like, at least just have it parted in a way that sort of doesn't set you up for failure mid wedding ceremony when a piece is just like strung across your forehead, hanging on for dear life. Like it was completely unfortunate. And then he had the audacity to sort of say that Selena was a bit much. He's not really into her at all. You know what I mean? And he's being quite a bit mean about it. I mean, give her a chance. And there was moments where at their reception when she was talking, you could tell that he was completely glazing over. His responses were like, yeah, <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, it's like he wasn't even listening to a word she was saying. Like his mind was elsewhere. Like, I don't know if something else happened that day or he just didn't give a fuck. All I know was he was not present. He was not there with her at all. So all in all, a kind of awkward wedding. Then they went on the honeymoon and you know, they're just kind of awkwardly existing in each other's space, but not actually connecting in any way, shape or form. And then they had I mean, they all spent time together and had activities, but then they introduced the honeymoon box and there was a question about, you know, are you attracted to me? Straight off the bat, Selena was like, yes, I'm attracted to you. Although I can't see why given the tragic state of his hairline. But you know, women have the ability to give people some time, give relationships time to build. You know what I mean? For attraction to sort of form. I wouldn't personally be attracted to Cody because he gives zero personality. He gives zero effort and his hair looks more like a toupee than actual hair. I, I don't know. Maybe she sees something that I don't. All I know is he's screaming red flags to me. And my worst fears were confirmed when he gave the response that he did in relation to the, are you attracted to me question. He, he was pretty much like, yeah, no, nah, I don't. I'm not. Yeah, no, not attracted to you. It's unfortunate. Sorry. Selena didn't hesitate to stroke his ego and say that he was attractive. And I think that was a bid for connection, to be honest. So he tells her he's not into her. Literally, what the fuck? Like she seemed genuinely hurt too. It's probably more disappointment than anything, having put all of her energy and risking a lot of judgment from her parents to come here and, you know, take this risk. If she is genuine, which I think she is. So to have her partner straight away be like, oh, no, nah, I'm not attracted to you. That's just like already a huge hurdle to get over. It's like, how do you make someone attracted to you? You literally can't. You have to be willing to give it time. And he doesn't seem like the type. The thing I'm getting with Cody is he struggles to find comfort and vulnerability like I think that he feels really exposed when he's vulnerable he sort of said that at the start and I just think that's really alarming because it's going to manifest in ways that are going to be pretty toxic I think like I wonder whether his whole I'm not attracted to you is him sort of being insecure in himself and in so doing making her feel insecure about herself by shutting her down 
it's a bit of a stretch. It's a bizarre take from me, I think. But that's what I'm getting. I feel like he, I genuinely feel like he's insecure, especially given how his hairline is. I just, I can't let it go and I can't unsee it. And I just think he's being so audacious given that his hair is in the state that it is. Like he's behaving like a typical man who is balding. That is my point. Like he's being super insecure. He's being super standoffish. And you know, he's not giving the relationship the required energy to form and sort of blossom. Like, like I don't want to demonize Cody for being honest about his lack of attraction, but something about him screams dishonesty in my view. He seems insincere. I just can't with his weird laugh either. Like everything about him gives me bad vibes. Now in episode four, they tried an, a massage, which seemed like his pathetic attempt to create connection. And I'm not even sure that that was his idea. I wonder whether it was the producers. Like they started off really brisk in the morning. Like she was feeling quite hurt and just didn't really want to bother with him. And then all of a sudden, like he's giving her a massage. So I'm like, how did we get here? <laughs> and anyway, it was more like a remedial massage. It didn't even sort of move into that sexual area whatsoever. <laughs> but anyway, he gave her a remedial massage. He named all of her fucking muscles. He must be in health or something because he knew every single medical term for each <laughs> muscle of the back. I will say that Selena's um, attempts to make him massage her butt were a bit cringe. It's like, if he's not into it, babe, don't force it. Okay, on to Andrew and Holly. He wrote her a cute letter prior to the wedding to put her at ease. So I think that was a nice gesture. And when she turned up at the altar, he was like immediately trying to put her at ease and sort of make it okay. Gave her a little fist bump and shit. He mentioned he was from Texas. She immediately became alarmed that he was a bigot and a right wing extremist and a Trump supporter. I mean, I would be too. Uh, that would be my immediate thought. If you're from the South, you fucking hate anyone who is progressive in their thinking, left leaning, as well as the fact that he's not from Australia and he probably has all his family over in America and he's got a completely different culture, which is gonna be a bit, you know, challenging to deal with. And so I would be super duper concerned. Holly has this thing about her, which is incredibly frustrating to me. And it's this internalized, idea that her body clock is ticking and she's got this sense of urgency that she has to fucking find someone and copulate ASAP. And that's so risky to me because I feel like you run the risk of really partnering with someone who is really, really bad just out of pure desperation. And he's already got a kid who he seems quite fond of. She hyper fixated on that fact for a little while until she planted the seeds, you know, are you right wing type thing. And he eased her fears and said that he did not vote for Trump. I'd just like to point out the fact that just because you don't vote for Trump doesn't mean you're not traditionalist in your thinking. You can agree that Trump was a bad president and still believe all of the right wing traditionalist Republican views. You know what I mean? So he may very well be anti-abortion. He may very well think that the women belong in the kitchen. He may very well think that gay people are sinners. You know, he may be a hard Christian. He may be all those things. And just because you asked, did he vote for Trump? And he said, no, doesn't mean he's a safe person. They're both also very much into manifestation. I think she is more so than he. And I believe in manifesting your, your ideal life and things that you want for your life. But manifesting a husband, you're not manifesting if you go on a show. <laughs> <laughs> it's not manifesting. If you go on a show where they've already pre-picked the fucking husband, babe, you're not going to manifest a healthy husband going on maths. FYI. He very much mirrored her energy, something that a lot of toxic people tend to do. He gives me toxic vibes. I'm not gonna lie. I think he has a few dodgy gaps in his story about being in previous relationships and having a daughter and how that all panned out. I don't think he's very forthright with the details there. So then they're at the honeymoon and they're having a great time. They seem to be getting along well, which is nice. He seems very nice to her. He speaks very nicely to her, you know, when they're interacting and shit. There was a moment at the dinner table and I, this is where I think girls like literally jump at the bare minimum. Like I, I'm seeing it with Ella and I'm 
I'm seeing it with Holly as well. When the man sort of gives, that they do one good thing and then they're like, oh my God, they're such great men, you know? And I think it's just really naive and really silly to just sort of not give it time to prove, you know? No, give them time to actually show their true character, ladies. So they're sitting at the dinner table having a nice romantic dinner. He has a vulnerable moment about his daughter. He starts to tear up and she just goes to him. <laughs> She's just like all over him. And it was kind of a bit much and you could kind of see him leaning like maybe his moment was very authentic and true. I don't think that it required her to like hug his head into her bosom. <laughs> anyway, because of the vulnerable moment, she kind of fell for him hook, line and sinker into a bit of a deeper, more emotional state and sort of by the end of it they've slept together and you know the whole like cutting from the dinner into the bath where she's sitting waiting for him and he just drops the towel and you see his whole backside and so she's facing his front side and I'm like how did we get here <laughs> hasn't it not been like 48 hours they're behaving like they've known each other for months just the way he like whipped off his towel was like standing there with all of his manhood out I'm just like that would scare me that would be like this is too much and so the next Next day guys, like the honeymoon box appears, the hard questions start, the attraction question again, and then straight away, stroking of the male ego. You're very tall, handsome, muscly, gorgeous, blah, blah, blah. But she also adds genuine facts, which is my attraction to people grows when I form an emotional connection to them. And I can relate to that a hundred percent. I mean, obviously you have to like what they look like, I guess, initially, but not, not always. I think that if you're attracted to personality, that is completely authentic and genuine. People can be attracted to personality only, you know what I mean? And not be very tied up at all about the social construct of what is pretty. When you delve into that, I really feel like people who pick their partners based on society's standard of beauty really only want to please the people around them and not themselves. Guys, he gets asked this question and he comes back with, I feel like I'm a good sexual partner. I'm this, I'm that. I'm I have a good manhood. He literally said that guys. He he literally lists off all the things that he's good at in the bedroom and sort of <laughs> sort of insinuates that he's got decent equipment. And then he's like, so because of all these things, I feel like I need a partner who I connect with. The words that he used were that she wasn't into it, but he was insinuating that she didn't perform in the way that he wanted her to perform. I'm sorry, what? If that was me, I would have been out of there. Who says that to someone, especially after your first night together? Who mandates a person to behave a certain way in the bedroom first night together? Like how inappropriate do you want to be? Like what the fuck does he expect? Like that's literally what she said too. She's like, what does he expect? Like, does he want a porn star? Because it sounds fucking like it. Like his ego about his equipment is so gross. And he talked himself up so much. It was disgusting. Like if he was concerned about her energy, he could have broached that topic topic so much more sensitively and so much nicer. He could have not criticized her at all. He could have left out all the shit that he's good at. And he definitely could have left out the one night stand line. Like, I'm sorry, bitch so fucking cruel. He said he's had one night stands where the women were more interested and into him than she was. Bitch, get out. Like, you've been with her one night and you're literally comparing her to a stranger that you he fucked. Like how unattractive, how disgusting. I bet her emotional connection to him just plummeted. Like it's so unnecessarily cruel that it's giving me narc vibes. Like he is really reminding me of a narcissist that I once had in my life. And you know, I'm feeling a bit triggered. <laughs> <laughs> but narcissists really do do that. They just like chip away at you, compare you to people and criticize you. And I'm like, it, it, he doesn't know her basically. He's just learning about her. And he's been really cruel with that comment. So I'm like, I think he's pretty toxic at this point. Like the audacity. Her response to these comments was really healthy. She actually didn't get triggered by what he said. And she sat there and was like, well, I'm not sure what you're expecting. And that it takes time to build these like relationships and this sexual chemistry and sexual connection and to learn about each other's bodies like and he just fucking came straight back at her with the criticism and he literally said that he's entitled to have a partner who actually is into him and I was like 
Bitch, you're not entitled to shit. News flash. But in terms of a woman and her body and a sexual interaction with a woman, you're not entitled to jack diddly squat, friend. Like, just an FYI, you don't build sexual compatibility by shaming your partner. Like, worst thing to do. Alarm bells are ringing, red flags are waving. So they spend the day apart and then he sort of does this whole self-reflection to the cameras and then comes back and offers her a very well versed direct apology where he's staring into her eyes and holding onto her hand like and she's like in terms of getting to know him I think she's gonna put some space between them now which I think is a wise decision because she's describing a roller coaster of emotions and that's a very telltale sign of abusive relationships god we're off to a good start with these marriages aren't we friends <laughs> so that relationship is a lot let's check in with all the other couples so Celine and Anthony Celine is still got all the walls up and is still taking things super slow and Anthony is still kind of encroaching on her boundary like he actually triggers me a lot I don't find him to be a nice person my perception of him is that he's trying to make out to the cameras like he's just trying to form connection but what I'm seeing from him is him pushing her boundaries like with the bath he ran her a bath a nice bath you know nice gesture blah 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 but then stood in the doorway much like with the feeding of the fruit thing sort of insists that he you know is there and is present like if you've run a bath for someone do it without any pressure leave the room and let her sort of have the bath like you don't need to stand in the doorway with expectation like she literally was forced to shut the door in his face because no bitch you're not getting in my bath so what's up you know and then he takes her to a pottery class you know to form some more connection they do the pottery they're having a nice time he does a little bit of a playful oh I got some pottery stuff on you and then she responds in a playful way, gets some on his face a little bit. And then she was like, okay, that's enough. Puts the boundary in. I don't want to get into a big fucking clay fight. I just wanted to be a little bit playful and let's not. And he just went ahead and got it on her face again and just kept going with it. And then it, surprise, surprise, turned into a fight. I feel like Celine, from what I'm seeing from her, is that she is feeling these sort of testing of boundaries and she's not liking it. She's feeling triggered but I don't think she really necessarily knows how to communicate that well I think she's lacking in communication skills I think she's feeling triggered and then not knowing what to do with it they went glamping and they tried to talk out the clay situation but I don't think she did a very good job at explaining what he did I just think that she is kind of feeling all of the emotions but because she's not clearly communicating what he did he's actually acting out in a sookie kind of way I think they're both a bit dysfunctional but I think that Anthony is the more immature one if you know what I mean I think that he's dealing with a little bit of a toxic masculinity issue where if he gets rejected he acts like a small child yes if they were able to communicate a bit more effectively maybe it would be able to be worked out but at this point it's not working out at all so it's very interesting because he says to the cameras that she is very one way in front of the cameras but then behind closed doors is goading him and he's saying you know are you gonna have a little cry about it you know smile princess and stuff like that that's the language she used they then had this huge blow up the next day he's saying that she's being rather a abusive behind closed doors and not in front of the camera but when I watched this last interaction he sat down and was like sorry about the language I used last night which we didn't hear anything about like and then he went to go on and say but you did this 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 and this like he like full attacked her about what she did and really was just explaining to the cameras what actually went on and what she did wrong he really wasn't owning any of his shit at all he was just accusing her of the shit that she did and so then when she was rebutting that fact he got up and fucking left and was like oh yeah just keep talking up to the cameras and shit you know just not hearing her not trying to communicate not doing anything that a, a functional relationship should do so he just walked off and the, the you know the conversation ended so in short Celine and Anthony are not in a good place 
Tamara and Brent, our seemingly toxic couple that are not really that toxic. I'm actually really pleasantly surprised about Tamara and Brent. I think Brent is surprisingly healthy and I think Tamara is too. I think a lot of people went really hard on them as a couple straight after the wedding because of how they were sort of pushing back at each other, myself included. I was like, Brent didn't need to interrogate her at the kitchen table and she didn't need to go off about the cake. But watching them on their honeymoon, I feel like they're communicating really well. They are having conversations and they're reflecting on their behavior at the wedding, which I think is really healthy. She's owning her shit. He's owning his shit. All in all, they're building a really healthy and functional connection so far. They're not actually intimate yet. I think they're taking it really slow, which is interesting. It's good to see, to be honest. One really good moment that I liked was when they were doing the honeymoon box and there was questions about various things and attraction and they both confirmed that they're both attracted to each other. I was waiting for Tamara to say something random and toxic, but she never did. They're both quite reasonable people. They both said to each other that they're attracted to each other. And so the next question was, you can ask me anything. And so Brent did this really cute thing where he was like, oh, well, can I kiss you? And I really love when guys ask if they can kiss. Like, I, I think that that is so 2022. Like, I think that all the guys need to get on the same fucking page as these other dudes who are sort of getting the message in terms of consent. Asking a woman if she wants a kiss is sexy. Um, She's likely going to say yes, but she doesn't have to, which is another thing that I really liked was that when she was like, ah, oh he was like you don't have to you know what I mean like that was beautiful and I appreciate that shit it makes me like Brent a lot and yeah they had this really awkward and weird kiss you know it's not like the movies portray it you know the whole kissing and the passion and blah 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 life's not like that and life can be clunky and awkward but wouldn't you want clunky and awkward over rapey and non-consensual shit I know I would also his foot aversion came up and she apparently has a missing toe Toenail, so I'm not sure how that's gonna work out, but he seems to be dealing with it okay. I didn't love how she shoved her foot in his face. I think that's a crossing of a boundary, but he handled it well and he seemed to like her playfulness. So all is well for now. Dominica and Jack, I still adore. They are the most unproblematic couple in the entire group. Um, they had this really gorgeous moment where they witnessed the birthing of a goat. I'm like, how do you plan that? How? I wonder, you know, the conspiracy theorist in me sort of wonders whether they discovered that the goat was pregnant, was about to give birth, and then they sort of constructed this whole scene around it, which is not too far-fetched. You know what I mean? I don't think that they just happened across a birthing goat. <laughs> Anyway, it was really beautiful. They both like animals. So that was a cute little bonding moment. They have been intimate and it was good. So that's good. They just seem all in all really healthy and functional. They had a little bit of a moment at the honeymoon box where the question was asked, what's your biggest insecurity? And she kind of what came up with the whole wedding thing. And, you know, I feel very judged sometimes. I feel people judge me all the time. And then his answer to the question very conveniently was that he is very scared that people will up and leave him and will she do that do you think that you're gonna up and leave me like so she got triggered she had to take off her fucking shoes for whatever reason like she was like oh, getting all hot and heavy but he like talked her down really well he was like you know that's not what I'm saying I'm not judging you and I'm not suggesting that you're gonna leave because of the marriage that's not what I'm saying it's just a fear of mine you know just the communication was spot on guys connection for the win I love how he answers her questions with no hesitancy, like the whole, are you attracted to me? Yes. <laughs> super cute. With Jack asking the whole question about the marriage, I don't think it's an unreasonable thing to ask. She did leave two months after the relationship and with someone who has a fear of being left, like it's a reasonable thing to ask. I'm team Jack on this one. I will say that was really good of Dominica to communicate that she was triggered. Like I said, like their communication is really good. Like you, you literally have to tell your partner exactly what's going on with you so that they know, like they're not mind readers. You know what I mean? So he tried his best to put her in ease. So I love him. He's a keeper. I think they're both really self-aware. So we love an unproblematic couple. At least there is examples of health in this series. <laughs>
so far. Ella and Mitch are doing quite well too. I think that Mitch is kind of quite funny. He's very hot and heavy. He's very much trying to get her all revved up and you know, hot under the collar. It's not a fucking secret. They do have sexual chemistry and they do like each other. And he comes across as a pretty easygoing, nice guy. And he is respecting her boundaries. I think he's definitely suggesting to her that he's ready when she's ready. You know what I mean? He's very, oh, you're a goddess. You're gorgeous. You're this, you're that. I just want to see that same energy after they have sex. And then I will decide whether he's a good guy or not. She has a three day rule. They only lasted two days. So he cracked her quite early. He also rates her a 10, which I hate. I hate rating. Don't rate someone. I know it's a saying. Yeah, I rate her, whatever. But just don't rate women. They're not objects and they're not there to sort of gain your approval in terms of how beautiful you think they are. Like women don't give a fuck or women shouldn't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Don't rate women. Don't rate men. Don't rate people like on a scale of one to 10. Cringe and gross. Disgusting. When Ella was giving details about their intimacy, she did say that he was very attentive and that he listened to the things that she was saying, which is all good things and good news. We love a man who is attentive in the bedroom. And that is all I have for these two episodes of Maths. I think there are some more couples that we are still yet to be introduced to and to have weddings. So I'm keen for that. Maybe that's what's gonna happen next week. Um, I'm excited to see more bridal dresses and more bridal parades and all the bridal things. And I'm excited for the venues and I'm excited for the drama, okay? It'll be interesting to see what happens to these toxic couples that are already starting to show their true colors. Uh, yeah. I hate Anthony, I hate Andrew with a passion and I'm really not a fan of Cody either. I don't rate them at all. Not that I rate people, but if I were to rate, they'd be in the negatives by now. Thank you so much for watching. In my next video, hopefully I'll be in my new setup, my office setup. I'm trying to sort of work out a space where I can set up all my filming gear and not have to fuck around with setup and uh, you know, packing everything up is what I'm currently doing in the minute. So hopefully next time you see me, I'll have my shit together and we will be able to film with ease and edit with ease and get shit out in a timely manner and hopefully I'll have my internet fucking sorted out. My episode number one is currently still uploading. I will tell you how much is left. Oh my god, it's literally only one more percent in that whole fucking time that I was filming it has uploaded just one more percent. That is fucked, mate. I need to do something about this. Anyway, wish me luck. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the like button, add a comment, which dress you liked best out of the two new brides. What do you think about all of the toxicity so far? Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Mwah. Peace.